Week 9, gentlemen, we're a little bit over 30 minutes. Let's jump right into it. We're going to start off with some belt plays. Let's take a look. Here's a snapshot at the snap. We get this one. Defender inside the belt, not a line. That's a good call. If we look over on this side, he's inside the belt. You know what? That's close. We can let that go. It's not big enough. But uh, this here is huge. He's not aligned with anybody at all. So we get that one. He becomes suspect because he's standing inside that belt. But I think that's uh, close enough to let that one go. Besides, we got the big one over here. So good call. Just philosophically monster over here. We got to get it. He becomes suspect because he's inside the belt there at the snap. You know what? Technically, he's inside the belt, not aligned. We'd probably say that might be a marginal call at best if we threw. But uh, we got to get the big one over here, and we do. Here's a call we want. Toes in front of the line. Remember, toes need to be on the line. Look in real close. Neither of these players is aligned. The goal line is the belt. Heels are on the line. Heels on are on the line. That means means toes are in front of the line. This is illegal. Again, we want this call tight when the goal line is the belt. Players need to learn. Get your toes on the line, not your heels. This is an absolutely correct call. One of our basic rules, we have a defensive box here, right? Approximately right there. And we have a rule that there can be no defender inside the defensive box at the snap. Let's watch the action by number 13. Well, he's definitely in the box at the snap. Why is this not a foul? Remember our exception. We've got a receiver going across the formation. 13 is attempting to stay even with him. He can go through the box. So that is a good no call there. Remember, the basic rule, no defender may be inside the defensive box at the snap. 13 here is attempting to mirror across the formation. Good no call. Week 9, we shouldn't be talking about formations, but here we are. These are easy calls. We want you to get the players lined up. If you take care of business in the first series, we won't have to talk about it for the rest of the game and hopefully the rest of the season. Ten plays to take a look at. Here we go. Opening drive for the offense. Why are we talking about this? Both defensive ends are in the neutral zone at the snap. This is a foul. Point of emphasis, get these defensive linemen lined up legally. Opening drive, talk to them, then talk with the flag. But both players here are in the neutral zone. Again, if this is the opening drive, talk to them, but this did not occur this game. It continued the rest of the game. And when we don't call it, everyone jumps in the pile. He's in the neutral zone. He's in the neutral zone, and we don't have a flag. Makes you wonder what our line judge is looking at. Three plays later, why are we talking about this halfway through the season? Even from this camera parallax, he's in the neutral zone. Defensive lineman not down in his stance at the snap. There it is. There it is, and we have a correct call. Outside, shoulder to shoulder. This is an illegal formation. 15th play of the game, and if we don't get it early, 15 here is going to keep working his way outside. Why not? It's not going to get called. He's going to line up outside. We've got to get this, and we've got to get this early. Number 15 is lining up his nose here. Not down in a stance at the snap. That is a foul. That is a foul. That is a foul. We have got to get that. That is a monstrous advantage. And 15 has been in this league for a while. He's a smart player. And he knows 
If we don't call it, he's going to keep doing it. we got to get that. Good old 15 again. Do we see daylight between the shoulders? Absolutely. That is daylight. Foul number one. Foul number two is he's not down in his stance at the snap. That's number 15. Trying to get an advantage. It's not being called. Finally, in the fourth quarter, we get it. So again, gentlemen, these players will continue to push it. If you're not going to call it, they're going to continue to line up outside shoulder to shoulder. They're going to continue to have that daylight in there. And they're going to continue to get that early jump until we call it. So good job. The crew finally got it. Took till the fourth quarter, but they got it. Same game. Other team. Defensive end lined up outside shoulder to shoulder. This is about the 20th play in the game. We need a flag. Illegal formation. There's daylight in there. Throw the flag, otherwise the players will continue to take advantage. Okay, the crew is now warmed up. This is just a couple plays later. The nose guard is not down in his stance at the snap, and we get it. So again, the crew is cooking right now. Just need them to start cooking in the first quarter and not wait until the fourth quarter to start calling these things. Good get. Keeping in line with the point of emphasis for 2017 and the defensive lineman having to be down in his stance, what differenti differentiates the average official from a superior official? The superior official sees the foul and does not anticipate. Here, this player is legal. There's the snap. He's still down in his stance. The hand's on the ground. Again, we understand points of emphasis, but the foul needs to be there. Here, the defender is legal. There's a snap, and the defender's hand is still on the ground, so we have a incorrect call here. Remember, you cannot anticipate the call. You have to see the call. So this would be an incorrect call for illegal defense. Next, we'll take a look at three illegal defenses. Couple things we want to take a look at here. First, it's fourth down and two or less, therefore the belt reduces to the line to gain. So that's why our linebackers are inside five, because remember, the belt here reduces to the line to gain. Now we can see by the umpire pointing to this linebacker, that linebacker has declared at some point. So everyone knows he the one he's the one that can blitz, but what happens? Linebacker number two, this guy number six. He blitzes also, so this is a correct call for an illegal blitz. That's it. He penetrates, uh, what, two yards into the backfield, number six here. So excellent rules recognition by the umpire getting this illegal blitz. Two fouls on the play. First, number four, he's the linebacker aligned at the back of the box. He's got to be stationary at the snap. That is not stationary at the snap. That's the call we missed. That's a big one. Then we have the illegal twist right here. Remember, here's the alley. Ball still in the alley. Watch the twist occur in slow motion. There it is. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Ball still in the alley. That's a big twist. Umpire sees it and flags it. So that's a good get. But remember, we want these uh, linebackers, the rule is stationary at the snap. That is not stationary, but we get the big twist. Good call. Here's just another look at the same play we just saw. Linebacker, not stationary at the snap. And then look at that twist. And remember, what do we want with twist? We want twist to be big. So here's our alley. Is this big? And I'll tell you, if we can see the twist from the sideline camera, that is big. Good focus by the umpire getting this illegal twist. Next, we'll take a look at some mechanics from last week. I think I got about 10 plays here. Back judge mechanics. This play speaks for itself. 
Are you kidding me? Why is that back judge not underneath the uprights? Of course, we got a tight play, tight call. Is it good? Is it not good? If he was in position, we'd be able to tell. We can't sell it either way here. We have got to do better than this. Here's the kind of focus we want. Watch the action between the two players here. That's a big hold. Right there. Takes him down to the ground. Line judge sees it, flags it, continues to officiate the play. We want the big ones. As you can see, that's a big one. Good job by the line judge. Talked about this last week. Watch 42. He's suspect for a block in the back. The superior crew, going to take a look at this, not there, but right there. Wow, I think I saw a block in the back. Guess what? That is a legal block in the side. Good discipline by the crew, not throwing here on something they, that looks like it might be a block in the back. Great job by the crew. Excellent focus. Same crew, just another kickoff. Let's watch the action by number 18. Do we think we see a takedown hold here? Or do we see a takedown hold? That's a world wrestling move. Takedown to the ground. We get a flag. That is a great call there. Again, do we think we see this? No way. We see it. That is a takedown. That is out in the open. That is a foul we see. We have to have. Good call. See the foul. Do not think you see the foul. You got to see it, and that was seen. Nice job. On this play, we have a crew officiating the play and not the ball. We're going to have an illegal block below the waist by a kicking team player. Out here at about the 22 yard line, right there. takes out the interference we've got a crew that knows they see a foul that is big they don't think they see it they see it that's what we mean by a foul jumping out at you that is an illegal block below the waist in this situation very dangerous in the open field K player goes low he's trying to take out the lead blocker and does Great job by the officials getting this. That's a big one. Again, they didn't think they saw it. They saw it. Okay, here's our back judge acting as an umpire here, so we're going to explain a few things here. Here's our back judge. He's not real familiar with the umpire position. Look at him pointing. Do we know who the blitzer is? Who's declared here? We have no idea based on that point. So what we want the back judges doing since they're, remember our umpires are usually right up here and they can point. If this backer declared, back judge, just hold your arm out going that way. If this one declares, hold your arm out going this way. You really can't point here as you do. We appreciate the effort, but that's just mass confusion. I mean, that's nothing right there. And then on top of that, to throw a flag for an illegal blitz, come on. So again, back judges, when you're acting as the umpire and the uh, backers are so close to the line of scrimmage and you're back against the wall, point with your arm out to the declaring blitzer. Now here's a problem with the players not knowing the rules. We have two linebackers declaring that they're going to blitz. But uh, it's a running play, so no harm, no foul, okay? They both declare, if this is a pass play, we're going to have an illegal blitz because neither of them can go because they've both declared. But it's a run play, so no harm, no foul. But let's look at the next play. Now here, he's going to declare, and like we said earlier, back judge put your arm out, that's fine, but watch what happens. There's the declaration. Back judge's arm goes out half-heartedly. He should hold that out until the snap. But what happens here? And this just jumps out at you. 
illegal double blitz and the illegal blitzer blocks the pass didn't declare he blitzes and knocks the pass down and we don't have a flag you gotta be kidding me and, and this just jumps out at you illegal double blitz nothing here we're gonna have an illegal blitz by a defender linebacker here who did not declare here we see that the back judge is pointing here so that is the linebacker that can blitz looks like we're snapped about the two yard line here and we have a double blitz he penetrates more than a he goes in there about one or two yards that is enough especially down near the goal line we want to call these plays tight that is an illegal blitz we got to get that one one more time our back judge acting as an umpire is pointing here that's the declaring linebacker but they both blitz illegal blitz when you're getting the alignment fouls this is an umpire who is not an umpire in the IFL he was filling in from the wing for us watch his mechanics looks like a veteran umpire here he slides to his right he sees the defensive end is lined up too far outside he sees the daylight he flags it and he continues to officiate the play even from this camera parallax there's daylight there and it's supported by the umpire looking down and seeing daylight drops a flag to a quiet area and continues to officiate the play this is an umpire who's never worked the position in the IFL and he officiates this play to perfection get them lined up legally and if you can't talk with your flag excellent work by this umpire Next up, three reminder plays. Here's a rule we missed. He's not on the line of scrimmage. Remember, a defensive player is considered to be on the line of scrimmage if he's within a yard of the defensive line of scrimmage. So here, we've got an illegal formation. Next, we've got an incorrect call for a motion receiver, false start. Remember, these things got to jump out at you. Let's stop it at the snap. There's the snap. Look where he is. He's with not only within the two feet of gray space. We don't want to hit this thing until he's about a yard beyond the line of scrimmage. You cannot anticipate these fouls. They have to be there. This is what we want to be doing. We want to be polishing officials now. We can't be correcting officials for incorrect calls, basic calls such as this. This is not a foul for a false start. Remember, do not anticipate the foul. Let it happen. You cannot anticipate these. It's got to be bigger than this. Motion receiver in the box at the snap has to jump out at you. That one jumps out at you. Let's stop it at the snap. There's a the snap. That jump out certainly does. Jumps out at you. Need a flag down on this one. Let's watch our runner here. Just caught a pass. His helmet's going to come off. And just as a reminder, crew did a good job here. They blew it dead immediately. You can see the runner is going to continue on. Insanity without his helmet. But as soon as the runner's helmet comes off, the crew did correctly blow it dead. I think they got the spot wrong by a couple yards here. But good effort killing this play immediately. If you see that, if you see the runner's helmet come off, let's blow it dead, kill the play, like the crew did here. Good job. This week we're going to spend just a little bit of time reviewing some rules in the IFL. I think i got about eight or nine plays to take a look at. A lot of them dealing with the timing issues in the game. So let's take a look. Basic rules knowledge. Listen in. What's the problem here? Inadvertent whistle. We've got a catch. He's not touched and the official is blowing his whistle. 
This runner can get up. This is pro football. He is not down until contacted. And we've got an official seeing a catch. And there's the inadvertent whistle. Basic rules knowledge, gentlemen. This player can get up and run. And we've got an official killing it. Know our rules. This is not NCAA football. Here we're going to have an incorrect call for offensive pass interference. Again, basic rules knowledge. First off, mechanically, line judge, he heads for the goal line as he must. We're snapped inside the 10. So this normally would be a tough call to get, but check our H out here. He's jammed up, so he remains on the line of scrimmage. He's got to see this. He's got to know the rules. The contact there between these two players is within a yard of the line of scrimmage right there. And the ball doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. So how can we have offensive pass interference? Look where the pass is caught behind the neutral zone. Incorrect call. we got to have better rules knowledge than this. Let's review Rule 9-1-G-7. The offense can't use the umpire as a pick in an attempt to get away from their defender here. Exactly what 84 does. He uses the umpire as a pick. Here it comes. First time this happens, it's a warning. Second and subsequent times, we want a flag for offensive pass interference. So here's the uh, 84 using that umpire as a pick. Need a flag down, warning for the first time. OPI thereafter. Now again, here's a later in the game, here's another use of the umpire as a pick. So that's why we want to get those warnings out early so we can call offensive pass interference here. But again, obviously this is being coached to use that umpire as a pick. And if we don't call it, it's going to continue to be run and we may get an umpire injured here. So... Throw the flag, umpire, when you see this coming right at you. That is a pick. Warning first. This is the second time it happened in the game. This would be OPI. Just a little rules review. We've got a scrimmage kick here. It's going to go out of bounds through the air, not bounce off the ground or a player. And it goes out of bounds at about the 10-yard uh, line. Where is this ball going to get spotted? By rule. That ball gets spotted at the 20-yard line. Scrimmage kick out of bounds. This is rule 10-3-C. If the scrimmage kick goes out of bounds through the sideline beyond the receiving team's 20-yard line, and remember, it went out about right here, the ball belongs to the receiving team at the 20-yard line. Rules question for everybody. These support wires... They are an extension of the goalpost. That kick good or not? This kick is good. Bouncing off that support wire is just like bouncing off the upright. If it bounces off and goes out, it's no good. If it bounces and goes in, as it does here, this is good. Just keep that in mind. Rules reference. The support wire is an extension of the upright. If it bounces in, that kick is good. Basic rules knowledge. If a scrimmage kick contacts the end zone sidewall or end wall in Team B's end zone untouched by Team B, it's dead. Here, ball is untouched by Team B is grounded in the end zone. This is a dead ball we spotted at the five. We have got to blow this dead. Simple rules, knowledge, and attention to detail. A basic timing rule. We're inside 60 seconds remaining. Runners out of bounds. Nobody is killing the clock. How do we miss this? Of course, the crew gets together, corrects it, 
and puts time back up on the clock. But uh, let's kill the clock and we don't have to waste any more time fixing these mistakes. Basic timing rules knowledge. Inside 60 seconds here, runner out of bounds, kill the clock. First quarter is winding down. Let's watch the clock and the play. Fourth down, and the Empire will try a field goal here. And this will be, in all likelihood, the last play of the first quarter. And this is going to be a 19-yard attempt here for Craig Peterson. He is 6 out of 9 so far this year on field goal tries. Dowdell holds, back heel to Stamper. And now will we get the kick? We will not. We will go to the, four, uh, the second quarter of play. So we'll take a timeout. Our score is Spokane nothing, Colorado nothing. Back with quarter number two after this break. You're listening to Empire Football on... Now, let's go to the next play to start the second quarter. The teams have reversed field, and let's keep an eye on the clock. And welcome to Roosevelt. SCCU is federally insured by SCUA. Well, the score of the game and I guess I'll stop you here and ask the question, at what level of football does the quarter start on a ready for play? Now, I understand getting these games over. There's 20 seconds that should not have been taken off the clock. Again, it all comes down to focus and attention to detail. Nobody's going to catch this mistake but an official. We have got to have better focus during the games. This is unacceptable. We'll close out the video taking a look at some UNRs and a couple of UNSs. Again, gentlemen, early in the game, take control of these players. If you see something, throw the flag. Let the players know you're out there and take control of the games, and let's put an end to the nonsense that we're seeing out there on the field. And if we can't, throw the flag. That will take care of it. Let's take a look. Opening drive of the game. How do we miss this? Players down. Late. Leaves his feet. Launches. You got it all here, and we don't have a flag. Are you kidding me? We have got to get these. Now let's contrast this play with the prior player. This, too, is the first play from scrimmage in this game. This crew is alert. They're not going to take any nonsense, and uh, let's just let it play out all the way through from the uh, YouTube shot, all the way through the excellent announcement by the referee. Williams tonight wants to throw on first down and throws to Lucas Hefty who makes the grab at the 13-yard line. Okay, we can see the runner's down. First play of the game, the crew seizes control of the game. No nonsense. Sends a message. The grab at the 13-yard line. A nice strike to get them going and a late hit called on the danger. And a penalty marker is down to start the game. Double coverage underneath and is our referee tonight, and he's about to give us the call, which I'm sure was a late hit against the danger as our third defensive back came in and made the play. The result of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, number 13, defense, unnecessary roughness. After but Wofford the was the late arrival. So, good job by the crew there, taking care of business right at the opening. Another missed call. We're going to have a touchdown here in the corner. Have to zoom in. Okay, here we go. Watch the contact by the defender. Plays over. We got a punishing hit. It's late. It's unnecessary. And we don't have a flag. No idea what the two officials are looking at. We have got to have a flag here. The play is over. That kind of garbage needs to be taken out of the game. 
we got to be better than this. Good focus by the referee here. I want you to watch the action against the quarterback after this interception. And this is the kind of nonsense we need to get. This is NCAA. This player is ejected. Remember, the quarterback is a defenseless player on a change of possession. I think this was written into the NCAA rule about two years ago after that quarterback, quarterback got lit up in the uh, SEC championship game. So under the guidelines, the passer is protected after an interception until he makes a legitimate attempt to go after uh, the return guy. And here, he's just pissed off. He threw an interception. He's entitled to protection and that is a great call by the referee here. We have to get that. Basically, interceptions, you really can't touch these quarterbacks, okay? No free shots here. Great job by the referee seeing this. And again, if this was NCAA, that's an ejection. On this play, I want you to watch the action by the defender. We're going to have a correct call here by the umpire targeting. You're going to watch this uh, safety dip down and hit the player square with the top of his helmet. Right there in front of the umpire. Vid swap cuts off there. That is the call we must have. One more time. Boy, right in front of the umpire. That's taking a chance, isn't it? But good call by the umpire. we got to get these. Nice job. Here's a touchdown. And the crew correctly enforced a rule that is in accord with our celebration guidelines. That's good. But as soon as this player enters the stands... This requires a flag. This is considered entering the stands. We don't care if he's getting interviewed or not. The crew correctly flagged this. And the options are the uh, offended team can back the try up 15 yards or they can place the foul in the bank. So good job by the crew. The players may not enter the stands. And this is considered the stands. And remember, they can do the Lambeau Leap where they're half on the uh, wall and the fans are pounding them. But if they leave the field of play and enter the stands, it must be flagged, as the crew did here. Good job. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 23 defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. This is number 23's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Javis Jones, apparently it was the motion that he made there, the little throat slash that earned him the penalty. Yeah, that is a foul in uh, the IFL, so not a, not a wise play. Javis is a very... Just a nice job by the crew getting that, and of course the referee with an excellent announcement. Now, gentlemen, we're about halfway through the season. The evaluators should just be fine-tuning and polishing things, and that's not happening with a lot of our crews, as you can see by the lengthy videos. Some of the crews were fine-tuning, perfecting. Other crews, seems like we're back in the high school days, teaching officials basic rules and basic mechanics and basic philosophies. If that applies to you, you've got half a season to get it together. We want to make you better. The evaluators will make you better. I want to make it easier on the evaluators. They just want to be polishing and fine-tuning. So help them along. Get cracking. Get this game down. It's not that difficult to officiate. If you're working this weekend, have a great weekend. If not, Hopefully you enjoy some nice spring weather. Talk to you next week. Thank you for your attention.